Today I'm going to show you 10 ways to breathe new life into your practice routine. Hi, I'm David Jaggs and welcome to short tutorial number 10 in a series exploring all things classical guitar. If you've not yet seen the other tutorials, click on the link above for the full playlist. It's quite common for students of the guitar to practice for two or three hours a day, get to a certain level and then not really see any significant improvement. Now, if you watch this, I'm going to give you some practicing tips that will definitely stop this happening. If you have a piece that has a stream of semiquavers, either all the way through or just a passage, let's take this difficult piece as an example, the cathedral, try practicing playing dotted rhythms at a slower tempo. This gives the hands time to concentrate on the faster movements. Use a metronome and play each section three times, then reverse the dots too, like this, and play another three times. Sometimes when you play a piece, you know that the fingers aren't quite in control, but you're not quite sure where. This way you'll soon discover where the weaknesses lie, you can find these places, reduce the speed and really concentrate, then gradually increase the speed. When you go back to straight rhythms, things should feel a lot easier. sections of pieces in the same way. It's a great way of isolating difficult areas. Take this part of uh, Giuliani Opus 48 number 7. There's a really tricky section at the end. It's a lot faster than that. It's uh, and the, the fingers kind of get lost. So again slow it down and get the dotted uh, rhythms going. the dots three of those tempo it should be a lot easier so th this practice method of the dotted notes it doesn't it's not just the guitar it works with um, I've seen pianists do it as well and it works just as well for them what you just saw there that was an ab absolutely genuine I did mess that up then I practiced it dotted three times one way three times the other and then I could do it at the end. So it's, as an example of it actually working. I should have had the metronome on, of course, which I didn't, which I will for the next example. I'm just going to give one more, one more example. This is number eight. There's a tricky bit at the end. So if we dot it, first of all, we put the dot at the, at the beginning. putting it at the end. So it feels totally different to play. One more. So it's some 
thing to do if you're playing a piece and there's a passage that you just can't get on with, you can't, you can't seem to get it right. So just try that and it could well work for you. It probably will work for you actually. So let's say there's a section of music in the piece that you're playing that has a really nasty shift. And I've found one here, it's another Giuliani, uh, another Giuliani piece. Okay, so it's a pretty nasty sort of shift. Now, the first thing I would do is practice the change without the shift. So, it's the same shape. So, to doing that I would then add the shift one fret at a time it's going to sound really unmusical and horrible but it's beginning to feel comfortable so let's put another fret in fret that you want to go to. So start without any shift at all and then another fret and it eventually it, your hands learn how to do it. You can even go higher if, it, if it's a really tricky shift. to do the actual one which is two frets lower it will seem easier so and again that's a genuine uh, practice I couldn't do that as well as that at the start of that little practice session there so it's a good way of getting your shifts perfect have you ever tried to play a piece that you're playing just the right hand on its own or just the left hand on its own it's surprisingly difficult especially just the right hand on its own. When I was practicing that last um, example there, I realized that some of the problem with the notes that I was missing was actually in the right hand. So let's stay with that example for the moment. So left hand practice alone. There's these shifts that we were talking about. One fret at a time. Try and speed it up. So this is left hand separate practice. Now the other hand. See, I'm a little bit unsure there which fingers are used. did study with Manuel Barreca for a while and he could play entire pieces hand separate which I still find absolutely amazing I've never been able to do it it takes a lot of time to prepare so the point is when you get the hands back put the hands back together again and they're both a lot more sure of what they're doing it will seem a lot easier to play Let's go back to that Giuliani study number eight and have a look at the end section again. So if we take the right hand separately, there are a few areas that you might think, oh, do I play an M there or do I play an I there? I'm not really sure. Well, it's, it is an I, in fact. And it gives you a hand, if you're doing it separately, you can really concentrate that movement there where you're playing A 
and then you move the fraction to I. And it's that kind of practice that you don't get if you if you're just playing it with both hands all the time. So there. So right hand on its own. As I say it does take a long time out of your practice schedule but you'll be amazed how secure it feels when you put the hands back together. And the same applies too to the left hand. So look for the to cut out any jerky motions you know it's got to be smooth. The right hand is the one though that you will really see the benefit with. I once asked a certain Cuban guitarist how he played with so few mistakes. One of his practice methods was to take a section of the music. It could be a tempo or slowly, say three lines, and if he could play it three times in a row, note perfect, he'd then move on to the next section. It can get frustrating if you've done two of these sections perfectly and you're getting towards the end of the third and you make a mistake. You have to start all over again. It really does focus the mind. You don't play three in a row by chance. And you'll also find that it improves your concentration in a live or exam situation. Depending on your level, you can take smaller or larger sections of the piece. This might seem obvious, but a lot of guitarists, including myself, often try to take a new piece and play it at speed before it's ready. If you take the piece at less than half speed like this, with a metronome, it's one of the best ways of teaching the hands what they need to do. You can watch every movement and slowly increase the speed over the coming weeks. This will have the added bonus of improving your concentration too. At the end of each of these sessions, you can increase the speed to three quarters tempo and then a tempo to see how it feels. And spend most of your time at a speed that you can be sure to hit all the right notes. The other thing about practicing at speed is that mistakes start to creep in and you begin to practice those mistakes. One of my teachers had a fantastic um, phrase. He said, you're practicing perfect mistakes. Now this next tip is a tip for mainly for beginners. So the more advanced players that are watching, just bear with me. Although the same principle does apply right the way across the repertoire. Now say that you're learning a new chord change. Uh, let's take E to A. Rather than just try and force the fingers into the right place, you have to watch what each finger does in turn. So let's first of all look at what the first finger does. In this case, it's going to just go up one fret, it's going to slide. So that's the first thing you can practice, just that slide. Now what does the second finger do? It's going to jump from here to there. So first of all, just see how that feels and then combine it with that first finger sliding. Now what's the third finger do? It's going to jump from there to there. So just get a feel of how that is. And then combine it with that first finger sliding. And then let's try them all together. It's a very efficient way of practicing. Let's take another change, say A to D. Let's look at each finger. Do any of them stay in the same place? Well, yes, in this case, this one stays where it is. It doesn't move. So I always say it's like an anchor. Do any of the fingers slide? Yes, this one slides from there to there. So you could just try that movement first. And then you look at what this second finger does and it jumps all the way from there to there. You just get a feel for it 
and then combine them. And you'll find that you learn these changes much more efficiently. So there'll be lots of um, opportunities all the way through the repertoire to use this method. Um, there's one in 15, which is a good example. And it's a really nasty change where you have to go from to there. So if you look at what each finger does, the third finger, and then the second goes from here back to there, together and, and then the other two things so but you just work each finger in at one at a time and these changes don't feel so difficult after all we all have busy lives as I've got older I've noticed I've got less and less time to practice but funnily enough I want to practice more than ever and I wish I still had the time that I had when I was a student. For this reason, it's important to look at how much practice time you have. Decide what you'd like to achieve and try to come up with a balanced routine. It's no good having a one hour warm up session if you only have 70 minutes practice time. It's no good practicing scales and arpeggios for an hour and only leaving yourself 10 minutes to learn your new piece. So your 70 minutes might be better spent with, say, a 10 minute warm up, 10 minute scales and arpeggios, 10 minutes sight reading and 40 minutes on your new piece, depending on what you're practicing for. Make a plan and stick to it. Be strict, use a stopwatch. And don't forget to leave yourself some time to play through some of the pieces that you've already learned. One of the most important things about improving on the guitar is to actually listen to yourself. When you're playing a piece and you make a mistake, stop and ask yourself, what went wrong? Why did I make a mistake? Now this is really important. Think about this for a moment. There's always a reason why you made that mistake. For every mistake you make, there's always a reason. That's really important. Um, sometimes when we're playing and it's us that's playing, we can't always hear everything we're doing. And this brings me to one of the most important and efficient ways of improving on the guitar, and that's to record yourself. It doesn't have to be with expensive equipment. Most phones have an app that will do it. It's not gonna sound great. Guitars are notoriously difficult to record well. But it will be good enough for you to listen back to and ask yourself what's going wrong. You might hear hesitations here or string noise there, and you can then go and work on these things. It's easier to hear these things going on when you're sitting listening to a recording than when you're playing yourself for some reason. So just ask yourself what could improve and this will show you what you need to work on. Coming back to our imaginary 70 minute practice session, it's probably not going to be long enough to um, cover all of the repertoire that you're playing at any given point. Maybe it's a better idea just to take one section of music or even just one phrase and really work on this musically and technically uh, rather than gloss over the whole piece and not really achieve anything. You know, you'll have time to do your three in a rows, your hand separate practice, your slow practice, and day by day the piece will really begin to take shape. Okay, so this is the last of the 10 points and probably one of the most important, and it's not to set your short term goals too high. So what I mean by this is it's really important to Keep your enthusiasm for the instrument um, and it's natural that you'll want to learn some of the more difficult pieces in the repertoire quite early on but I would suggest sticking to some of the simplest pieces I think it's better to play an easier piece well than a difficult piece badly and you can also by doing that you can get into some bad technical habits so if you stick with the simpler pieces, you can really work on your technique at the same time. Um, some of these difficult pieces, they're even harder than you could imagine they would be. I remember David Russell once said in one of his master classes that learning the guitar is like climbing a mountain. He meant that you think you're getting near to the summit, but every time you get over the horizon, you can see you still have a long way to go. The guitar's a bit like this. 
you'll master one technique or skill and then realise that there's another one that you have to learn. Don't let this put you off and remember that there are thousands and thousands of really beautiful simpler pieces out there. Um, don't think of these pieces as something that you have to leapfrog over on your way to the Bach Lute Suites or the Rodrigo Guitar Concerto or the Benjamin Britten Nocturnal, but see the charm that they have in their own right. I hope this has given you some ideas. It's not by any means a complete list. I might give another 10, 20 or 30 tips in the future, but I'm sure there's some ideas there that will help you to improve. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. Leave your comments and suggestions below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you won't miss any more short tutorials in the future. Next week, I'll be telling you the most important thing I ever learned on the classical guitar. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.